In this video, I'm going to talk about how I use Git as a safety net when working with AI, specifically with AI that can modify files on my computer. Now, here's the thing. If you're letting AI tools mess with your computer, you want to be really careful because while they're really great at writing code or doing things for you, they don't really understand the greater context. They don't understand what they have access to. They don't understand what they're deleting. And there was this one time when I used Klein to do something and I didn't even look. I let it do whatever it wanted. And when I came back, I realized I lost a lot of data. And luckily, I was already using Git. So I had it set up in a way that every time something was changed, it was committed to Git. And that way I was able to just roll back and get all my data back. But if I didn't have Git set up for that directory, it would have been a much different situation. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you how I use Git with MCP. This is gonna be a very basic overview of Git. There are a bunch of wonderful tutorials on YouTube where you can learn about Git in greater detail. I'm just gonna show you how I use it and give you the basics. You might know some of this or you might not. So I'm gonna try and make this in a way that's understandable for everybody. Okay, so first things first, Git and GitHub. So Git is a versioning system that runs locally on your computer. It's been around for almost 20 years and it's different from GitHub. GitHub is pretty much Git on the internet. So let's say you wanna upload what you did to Git to your GitHub so you could access it in the cloud from anywhere or share it with others. Now, Git and GitHub are super powerful. They're used by everyone from solo developers to huge engineering teams to track changes in their code. And the basic Git workflow is pretty simple. You start by initializing a Git repository in your folder. Then you tell Git which files you want to track, which files you want to save, and you can also tell it what you don't want to save. Now, whenever you want to make a checkpoint or you want to save, you commit those changes to Git. The saving process is pretty much called a commit. And when you do a commit, you could also give a commit message. And this is really important and give you or the other people in your team or whoever's gonna look at your code context of what you changed. So it's really important to also write git commit messages. And so what this gives you in the end is a whole history, a timeline of things that change, both from a code perspective and from a context perspective. And if you need to revert, if you need to restore an older version, you're able to do that in git. So I'm gonna show you how I set up with Cloud Desktop. And I'm also gonna show you how you can use it within VS Code or Cursor or whatever. So one of the first things I did with MCP is I gave it access to a folder. I used the file system server. So I gave it access to a specific directory. It's a folder on my desktop called Claude MCP. And that is the only folder that Claude is able to mess with. It's able to add files, delete files, modify files. It can't touch anything else on my computer. So I added the Git server as well to look at the same folder on my computer. And I baked into my custom instructions in my personal settings that every time there's any change made to the file system that Claude is changing in the file system to also write a detailed commit message and commit those changes to Git. So this way, if something changes, I could see exactly what happened and roll it back if I need to. So I'm gonna show you how to set this up with Claude MCP. Now we're in the official GitHub for MCP and we're gonna go down and there is an official git server so there's the file system this is the first one we did now let's click git and here are all the commands it can make we're just gonna go to the installation now we're gonna install with uvx this is how i installed it now see here path to git repos so you're gonna change this to the path to the directory you're giving it access to. So in this video, we're giving it access to the same exact directory that the file system has access to. If not, it doesn't really matter. So you're just gonna copy and paste from here to here, because I'm assuming you already have some MCP servers installed. You're gonna copy it and you'll open up VS Code. Okay, so we're in VS Code. We see my Claude desktop config file. Here's a file system. As you see here, I gave it access to my desktop, the Cloud MCP folder. So when I added Git, in here, I did the same thing. I gave it access to the same exact directory. You could literally just copy it and paste it. So once you add in the server, you save it. You do command S to save your file. And by the way, I'll also use git in here. I'll show you that after. Then you open up Claude and you'll have your new git server in here. Now, one thing I should tell you is that if you want the git server to work in that directory, you have to initialize git first. So there's a few ways of doing this. I already had it set up. I'll show you the easiest way. So now I'm just gonna show you how to initialize Git if you haven't done it before. In this case, I made a new directory, Git example. So the easiest way I can tell you to do it is with terminal and it's really easy. All you're gonna do is press CD and then you're gonna drag the folder you want into here. So now your terminal is looking at this folder and all you wanna do is type Git in it. Once you do that, you'll see initialize empty Git repository at this directory. Okay, now you're ready to use it. So if you're using the file system MCP server already and you already have it directed at a certain directory, put this directory in terminal and type in git in it, initialize git, and then you'll be ready to go. But one other thing I wanna tell you, and I showed this in a previous video, is that I added a lot of custom instructions in my personal cloud settings. One of these settings are for the file system. 
Whenever modifying the directory in the file system, make a git commit documenting what has changed. Okay. So this is baked into my Claude settings. Anytime it has access to the file system, it will follow this instruction. Okay. So let me just show you now how it works with the full workflow. So I'm gonna say, write a poem about flowers that never die, save it to the file system. And what we wanna see is that it will write the whole thing, save it to the file system, and then commit it to git. Okay, so now it's saying, can I write to the file system? Allow. Now it's gonna run git add from git because it has access to the git server. It's gonna do a good commit now. So just from the output, we see I wrote a poem, I saved it to the file system at this path, and I committed it to the repository. Okay, so let's just open up that path and see first of all that it did it. So now we're on desktop Claude MCP. That's where Claude has access to. It created a new folder, a new directory, and then it created the file. Here's the poem, let's look at it really quickly. Looks like a poem to me, I'm not gonna read it. We see that I wrote to the file system and did it all through Claude. Now let's just check Git. And I like to use source tree. With source tree, you can point it to any different Git repository you have on your computer locally, or even to your GitHub, GitLab, wherever you're saving in the cloud. And you do that by just pressing new, add existing local repository, and you point it to the folder that you initialized Git in. Now I already did that here, so we're just gonna click Claude MCP. And here you can see all the changes to that directory. So here's the one we just added. And it's already the main branch, it was committed. And here's the file. Now, again, with Git, what's really cool about it is you can see changes. So here, the red is what was deleted, and the green is what was added. So this is just like a graphic user interface for Git. It's called Source Free, really great, it's free. Now, one other thing I wanna show you, I wanna go back to VS Code, I wanna show you how you can use Git within VS Code. So I've also mentioned that I will often commit my Claude desktop config file to Git as well because I make a lot of changes here. I switch between servers. I like the ability to just be able to revert back to previous versions. So, so VS Code, Cursor, all the IDEs pretty much have Git or source control built in. In VS Code, it's just but this button right here. And right now, I'm just looking at my entire Claude folder. But what I commit here is the Claude desktop config.json files. So just like source tree, you see all the changes in that directory since the last time you committed to Git. The only one that I want to save is the Claude desktop config file because that's the one I keep editing with MCP server. So what you do is you press stage changes. You type in a commit message and you press commit. So that's it, it's a pretty straightforward process. I use it for everything. I like to be able to have versions and be able to just revert back. I'm very meticulous in this. And obviously you can use this for anything you're doing with Claude, any file system, be it writing documents, writing code, or with Klein. I recommend steering away or being very careful with YOLO mode, which is on cursor, or with Klein, because a lot of us have the tendency to just let AI go ahead and do its thing, because it's really good some of the times. If you just let it do its own thing, and you later find out it created a bug or did something even worse, you're gonna be pulling your hair out. I already did. So yeah, that's pretty much how I use Git with MCP in the config file and also in my file system. I suggest doing a deeper dive into understanding the fundamentals of Git, but for right now, I think you have enough to get started. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.